Hello and welcome to the video. As you can see, I've got on spooky attire, I've got my pumpkin candle going and some spooky jars because we are filming the first of many spooky videos I'm hoping for the month of October because I am helping host along with 12 other girls who I will link down in the description below Spooktober which runs from October 1st to October 31st. It is a Halloween spooky filled readathon that anybody can participate. So the main host is Vanessa from Paper Fairies. She is such a sweet girl and she has put so much work, all of us have really, into these prompts, photo challenges, and just the general atmosphere of this readathon. We want it to be relaxed and chill and not have so much pressure because 2020 has been hard enough and October is meant to be fun and there are obviously a lot of things that we won't be able to be doing this year because of everything that's going on. So hopefully if you participate in this readathon, it will just bring a little joy to you. So there are three main aspects of this readathon, which are the prompts, the photo challenges that run from the 1st to the 13th, and the movie watch along calendar, which you can find down below. Several of us have volunteered to host movie nights throughout the month of October. I myself have signed up for three, two of which I know were for Coraline and the Adams family. There is a third one that I signed up for, but I can't remember what it was at this moment. So let's talk about the photo challenges. Like I said, the photo challenge runs from, from the 1st to the 13th. You can post your photos to Instagram or Twitter and tag us at both locations. I will have the account listed below. Go ahead and give it a follow as well so you can keep up with what all of the hosts are doing. And I'm sure we're going to be sharing some of your wonderful pictures on there as well. So the photo challenges are as follows. 1. October Reads, 2. To a photo you took on the night of the full moon, 3. October Craft, 4. October Decor, 5. Books and Candy, 6. Something that scares you, everything scares me so that should be easy, 7. Blackout Poetry, 8. Fave October Treat, 9. Fall Aesthetic. Target has a ton of great stuff right now. I went this morning and I really really had to restrain myself and not buy a ton of things. 10 spring aesthetic in honor of our southern hemisphere friends. I know some of you are entering the spring time period if you live in like Australia or South Africa. So the stuff that your shops are selling might not be super fall related, uh, but we did include the spring challenge just to include everybody. 11 continue a book cover. 12 your reading spot. And 13 a bookish costume. This can really be anything. I mean Maybe I'll dress up as Coraline because that is a book I might read this month. I am pretty excited about that. So those are all of the photo challenges. Now we're going to get into the prompts for this. You can double up. If, if you have one book that fits all 20 challenges, more power to you. If you want to do five, eight, however many you want to do, that is perfectly fine with us. You also do not have to complete all of the challenges. This is a relaxed readathon. So if you want to pick one or two and focus on those, that's perfectly fine. So the readathon has been broken up into four sections. Costume party, dance floor, refreshments, and festivities. So as I go over these prompts, I'm also going to be letting you guys know what I will be reading to fit the prompt so that you can have some early recommendations before you put your own TBR together. I did double up on a couple of them. Um, I think I have about eight or nine books total for all 20 challenges. I don't think I'm going to read all of those, but let's get into what I have picked. The first prompt for Costume Party is Scary, which is to read a horror book. The book I chose was King of Crows by Libba Bray. This is the finale in the Diviner series. It is technically considered a thriller. It's also like paranormal fantasy. The premise of this series is that we are following several teenagers from Manhattan, New York in the 1920s who have discovered that they have special abilities who are fighting against an ancient spirit who is trying to bring about the end of the world. I absolutely have loved this series. Like I said, this is the final in the Diviner series. The first book is definitely the most gruesome, but it is still very, very creepy, cultish, and I have just loved it so much. It is a chunk of a book, so 
hopefully I can get through it. The second prompt is silly, a book that you think will make you laugh. I am going with pumpkin heads for this. I don't have the book just yet. I am planning to purchase it right before the readathon starts. Graphic novels are something that I'm trying to get more into this year. I have read several of them and from what I've seen this just looks like it's going to be like a feel-good cute book that I am hoping will make me laugh. Next we have fantasy which is pretty simple. Read a fantasy. The book that I have chosen for this is Children of Virtue and Vengeance by Tomi Adeyemi. I read Children of Blood and Bone last year and absolutely loved it and I bought this like right after it came out so I don't know why I've just been sitting on it but it is a fantasy and it's going to be a perfect read for October. Number four is Couples to Read a Romance and again I picked Pumpkinhead. Like I said I am doubling up on some of these challenges just to kind of make it easier on myself because I do want to try and read all of them but I'm not sure if I will. So I picked Pumpkinheads. I know very little about this book but I do know it's about two characters who work at a pumpkin patch every single year during the fall and one of them has been vying after a, another girl that works there so they embark on a quest to try to help him get the girl. And last for costume party is besties to buddy read a book. I have not picked a book for this or a buddy read partner, I am probably going to talk to one of the girls who is participating, who is hosting, um, see if maybe they want to read. It's just not one that I have, it's just really not one of my favorite prompts, I guess. I am a slow reader, I'm a mood reader, and I don't want the pressure of having to keep up with somebody else, so I don't know if this is one that I'm going to be participating in. Next up we have Dance Floor, and the prompt for that is Monster Mash to read a book with a monster. For this I picked Seeing Red by Frank Bador. I definitely see Red as a monster. It's just the kind of character that she is. But I do know that she also keeps creatures and monsters to use at her disposal and they do come into play in this book. This is, by the way, by the way, this is a retelling of Alice in Wonderland. The first one, Through the Looking Glass Wars, is somewhat where Tim Burton got the inspiration for or his version of Alice in Wonderland which I believe is through the looking glass um, his inspiration came from this series which is a much much darker retelling and I absolutely loved it prompt number two for dance floor is I put a spell on you to read a book with magic for this I am also going with children of virtue and vengeance it does have magic elements to the book you can purchase the first book actually in special copies that say on the front of them what your type of like elemental magic would be I guess. Just like this I have this edition in the lighter copy which means like sun magic I think. This book definitely deals with magic and the magic system and world that has been set up in this is amazing. To read a book set in a different time and again I'm going with King of Crows which is set in the 1920s which is just an era I love so, so much. The fourth prompt is superstition to read a book based on mythology or folklore. And I went with Mermaid Moon by Susan Kokal. I know that this deals with mermaid folklore. I don't really know too much else about it. It was honestly a cover buy at Best Buy, but I do absolutely love the folklore surrounding mermaids, especially when it's darker, which I think this is. And lastly for Dance Floor we have Thriller which is to read a thriller and for this I picked Catacomb by Madeline Rowe. It is the final in the Asylum series which centers on these young kids who go to a summer college prep program in New Hampshire and they are actually staying in the portion of the college that used to be an insane asylum and our main character finds out he is related to the warden that used to work there like almost 60 or 70 years ago who did some very very not nice and sketchy experiments on some of the patients that were there. So we are following our main character Daniel trying to figure out who he is, who his family is, and why they are getting all of these mysterious messages and photos sent to them, who is following them, and kind of like where his future will lead. Definitely very very spooky. A thriller for sure. I have read the first two books in this series obviously and each one made my heart pound as I was reading them. It 
really gets me but like I mentioned before I'm a bit of a scaredy cat so of course it's getting me. Next we have the refreshments section and the first prompt for that is punch bowl to read a book with a character who fights. This one was a little difficult for me to pick but I did double up with scene red again. Scene red is from red's perspective in the first book she has been taken down by her niece Alice and this is all about her fighting to get back her kingdom. She believes she is the true heir to the throne and she does some devilish things to get it back. Next we have Eyeball Soup, a book you can't stop eyeballing and this was a pretty easy pick for me. I went with A Song of Wraths and Ruins. Now I don't know if this is Wraths or Wraiths because it's got an eye in it but I absolutely love this cover. Knew nothing about it, saw it in Barnes and Noble and was like yeah I need that in my life. I don't care what it's about but I want to read it. This is by Roseanne A. Brown. She is a POC author and of course this year we are trying our hardest to support authors of color and I have heard such amazing things about this book so hopefully I will be able to fly through it in October. Next we have Miss Lovett's Meat Pies which is to read a book with a character you think will be unlikable. I don't have anything for this prompt. Um, I'm hoping that I will be able to find something to fit it before the readathon begins, but like I said, this is chill, this is relaxed, so if I don't find anything, no big deal. This is also a reference to Sweeney Todd, which I really, really wanted to add to the Google Calendar, but it's no longer on Netflix, and I swear I just watched this like a couple weeks ago, so when did they take it down? I don't understand, and why? It's such a good movie. Prompt four is Devil's Food Cake, a book with a black cover. I chose Finale by Stephanie Garber. The cover is, the dust jacket is like a purplish color, but the actual cover of the book is black, which is kind of cheating, but I'm going to go with it. Finale is the series finale in the Carval series. It centers around two sisters who desperately want to leave their life behind where their father is just abusive to them and their mother has disappeared and go to Carval, a carnival festival that is like a week long and the winner gets a wish granted to them from a legend who hosts the games and they just, like I said, they want to escape their lives. Finale is, it's absolutely a series that I loved so much. The first book centers around one sister, Scarlet. The second book centers around the second sister, Tella, and their journey to just find out who they are outside of their controlling father. It's so magical. There's just so many twists and turns that get you. It's so good. I highly recommend this series. The final prompt for the refreshment section is Candy Bowl. To take a small piece and read a novella or graphic novel. Again, I'm going with pumpkin heads for this, obviously because it is a graphic novel, so it perfectly fits the prompt. Our last section for the prompts is festivities, and the first prompt is carved jack-o'-lanterns, to read a book with a face on the cover. For this, again, I went with a song of wraths and ruins, or wraiths and ruins. Um, there is a beautiful girl on this front cover. I don't know if my book will focus, or if my camera will focus on it, um, again, this cover is just so, so stunning. Prompt two is Bob for Apples, which is to sink your teeth into a tomb. I believe a tomb has to be over 500 pages and King of Crows is like 530, so going with this again. Prompt three is Ouija board, which I do not mess with. I am a good Mexican girl. I do not mess with anything otherworldly or spiritual because my grandmothers would keel over and die if they heard that I was messing with stuff like that. But the prompt for Ouija board is to read a book people have warned you about. For this I'm going with Ninth House by Leigh Bardugo, which again is another book that I do not have but need to purchase. I have heard so, so many things about this book, so many conflicting opinions people who loved it and people who did not and I know that there are a lot of high expectations because we love the Grishaverse so much but it is an adult fantasy novel. It is not for young adults so I'm really really trying to go into that book with that mindset that it is not a fantasy book. It is not connected to the Grishaverse at all. We're not going to see those characters. It's different so 
this is a book that I have heard that a lot of people just didn't like and are saying like don't buy it it's not worth your money this is a book I have been warned about and I'm I'm gonna take that plunge and do it anyways prompt four is to hang out with the pets I do this at parties I find the pet because pets are better than people and the prompt for this is to read a book with an animal on the cover king of crows does fit this but I'm trying not to use one book for so many prompts so I might try to find a graphic novel for this actually maybe I'll read one of the avatar ones because that's got Momo and Appa we'll see and the last prompt for Spooktober is trick or treat which is to pick a book that would be a treat that you would like or a trick that you won't like flip a coin and see which one you're going to read so for treat I picked Crescent City House of Blood and Earth Earth and Blood by Sarah J Mass which I love Sarah J Mass, so I'm really hoping I'm gonna like this and for my trick I picked One Dark Throne by Kendare Blake Kendra Blake I did not like Three Dark Crowns. I just wasn't for me. I still have it and might unhaul it if I don't like Three Dark One Dark Throne. I might purchase it just on iBooks so that it's cheaper or listen to it on Scribed if they have it. But I really didn't like the first one and I don't think I'm going to like the second one so it's definitely my trick. So we're going to do Tales for Trick, Heads for Treat. Tales for Trick. So I guess I'm reading One Dark Throne. You can tell I'm so happy about that. So those are all of the reading prompts for Spooktober. Please make sure that you check out all of the links down below. I will have all of the girls' Instagrams and Twitters and YouTube channels that they have them linked below as well as Vanessa, our amazing main host. I will have the Spooktober Instagram and Twitter link down below as well and all of my links for where you can find me on Bookstagram, Twitter, and YouTube are down below as well. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, comment down below, let me know if you're participating, let me know what you are reading. Don't forget to follow all of the amazing ladies linked down below and I will see you guys in October. Bye!